Hey everybody, Sean here from the Sci-Fi Model Guy and welcome to chapter two of the Jupiter 2 build series. We're going to be moving along at a good clip on this one, folks. So you're going to see a couple of crunchy edits going on in this one. I do apologize for that. So I'm still getting used to doing this kind of in a shorter and more condensed format. So specifically in this video, you're going to see me building from scratch a landing strut leg, which the power is going to go down through out of the model. I had to cut that little segment short because there was a little bit of a mess up on it. It's fine now. It's going to look fine at the end of the at the end of the run and i'll talk about it there but for time purposes on this one i just decided to cut that short and there's a couple other things i just kind of did a quick edit there so if you're just kind of half listening in the background and you hear like a audio just go from one bit to another please accept my apologies i just like i said doing a couple of quick edits there to keep the time short so we'll be doing uh half an hour videos maybe no more than 45 minutes going forward so with that enjoy this one folks if you have any questions comment please let me know and if you're enjoying these videos so far and haven't yet subscribed go ahead and click that subscribe button it would really help the channel out and help us grow see you soon everyone happy modeling all right everyone here I am in the paint section of the garage and I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I've done here so I'm starting the light blocking process and if you look here I've put some tape over these little um, protrusions that are coming out of there now these are what connect with the other side on the this is the top of the ship here and you can see here so I've just put some tape over them and that's just to prevent some of the paint from getting in there so I have a clean fit now um, when it comes down to it I'm probably gonna put these together with a, some sort of a magnet system I still need to figure that out and I do need to go back and cover these with some tape too. these little small ones there. There are some corresponding uh, male ends on this side. So that's it. This is actually the first video I'm recording for this build as far as doing any work on it. Don't know where it's going to end up, but uh, this is it. This is the start. I'm super excited. So we'll see you in the next segment, whichever it is. Okay, everyone, the first set of pieces are now off of the sprues, sanded and ready to begin construction and priming. So I've removed some of the numbers that were on the inside of some of these pieces here. Uh, they were just barely visible when you put them together. So those are now gone and I've gone ahead and removed all of the flash that I could using a, um, a little metal filing thing that I have here. I've got a set of things similar to this as well as the good old sanding stick and the exacto knife to you know scrape away some of the stuff so these are ready to go now i'm going to also uh, this was picked up from another build that i saw it's uh, models by chris so big shout out to him he's got a wonderful uh, 12 part series on this kit and uh, it just goes into insane detail so i'm going to be um using some of his techniques as inspiration here and education that I use. So one of the things, first things that I saw that Chris did was duplicating this uh, landing strut. So <clears throat> kind of uh, to describe it, these stairs that uh, go like this, I think they're up here. These are the sides. And then there's like this, uh, this little leg here that, that pops up. So what Chris did in his, and I'm going to do the same thing, is we're going to duplicate this piece. And you can see here that it looks like it telescopes in and out. And that's where the wires for the power of the ship come through. So I thought it was a pretty ingenious way to kind of disguise it. So I picked up uh, some tubing, and this is 532nd inch brass tube, which is here, and some... 3 18 inch aluminum tube and if you see here they they will telescope in really nicely they go fully in and out so I've marked on here where I'm going to cut them and we're basically going to duplicate one of these these little uh, hydraulic lifts or struts or whatever you want to call them so the bigger part the aluminum is down here and it's going to be this piece here. I'll use this little pointer. 
So these little ridges here, I'm gonna cut those off and we're gonna drill a hole through there for the wires to come through. So I need to cut a piece of tubing this wide for the aluminum. So I've marked that here with the X-Acto knife. It's not the X-Acto knife, I'm so sorry. The Sharpie. And then on the alum, uh, brass one, I have marked here with the angle that I'm going to need. So I, I do have it so it goes all the way to the bottom here. And um, I'm going to cut on the inside of this little line that I made with that. And that should give me the approximate angle that this is in. And that will be great. So this, these two things together will replace one of, one of these little uh, hydraulic leg things. So that is that. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble these and maybe do a little time lapse or something, glue them together, kind of show you, and then we'll prime everything and keep going. So be right back. Okay, uh, it's the first time trying this out. So I've got the aluminum tubing pe uh, taped down on a piece of wood here, and I've got the mark where I want to cut out. I'm going to give it a try with this little uh, serrated knife. It's uh, mainly for wood. I picked it up, and maybe it'll cut through this, so we'll, we'll give it a try. Seems to be working just fine. If I need to, I can probably finish this off with the Dremel. Let's uh, turn it a little bit. Nice. Okay, I'll just get the old sanding disc on the Dremel, which is right here. We'll use one of these on there and we'll We'll just smooth that down and I'll do the other piece now. So that worked pretty well. This little knife uh, cut through this thin aluminum nicely. We'll see how it does on brass. Okay, give it a try. So one thing I do want to point out, I do have it at an angle to mirror the angle of this part right here. Let me see. Seems to be going through a little less smoothly than the aluminum. Whoops. This one I'm gonna try and go through all the way without turning it. So it looks like, looks like I'm almost there. There we go, not too bad. And we'll give it a test. There we go. And that pretty does, pretty much mimics this. Close enough. Let's see. Yeah. You know, there's something special about when you're doing a model and you're about to start painting something in a significant way. And I'm at that point right now. So I know that I had said that I'm not going to record every little bit of this, but this one's pretty important to me. This is uh, pretty key. So I'm ready to start uh, painting here. I've got the stairwells here and I've got the underside of the hole here 
and I've got my Tamiya Mica Silver. And I just wanted to record this part because this is a, a fun part, everyone. So I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and spray all these things. It's going to take a few coats probably. And I just wanted to get this on, on uh, video here. So I'll be right back and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, everyone, I just wanted to show the results here. This is just one coat, everybody. And this mica silver from to me is just fabulous. It went on really nicely. And again, the Tamiya paints go so well onto their own primer. Look at this. I mean, it's it's almost reflecting already. And and I put only one coat. And you can see some bare spots there that I have to go back and hit. So I'm going to probably do three coats on, on the hull. I think I bought enough paint. I bought two cans of this mica silver. And I'll just pan up here to the stairwells that I did. And that's going to probably need another coat. I might be able to get by with just leaving it. But uh, again, I want it to be thorough. And uh, then here is the manufactured uh, with the tubing that I bought. I will have some discussions about that later. But uh, as you can see here, there's the hole that I drilled. So all the power for this entire ship is going to come out of that foot right there. So, okay, everyone. Um, see you in the next segment. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about the resin figures that we're going to be putting into the ship. So I did a test, and uh, this is the method I'm deciding on going with. So right here we have Judy, and Judy has a toothpick stuck in her foot. So a few reasons for this. Now, one, these figurines, if you recall back to the unboxing, had, were on a little stand. And I was considering leaving them on there as like a, um, a little platform that they were standing on. But in, I decided to cut them off and that figure out a, a way to make them stand up straight. So uh, what I've done is I have my, my handy pen vise here and I've got two different drill bits. I've got one small one to kind of drill a pilot hole. And then this one that I've chosen that is about the same uh, diameter as the toothpick. So what I'm going to do is I'll start with pulling, not pulling, I'll find one of the straight legs here. So that I got Dr. Smith here. And I'm going to just drill a little pilot hole into his foot. And now put the larger bit in. So now that I've got the larger bit in, I'll go to the pilot hole and go in. So I'm only going through about a quarter of an inch. And that's about as much as I figured it will take to have a stable, uh, have the figurines be stable standing up. And what I'm going to do at the end, you know, so I will drill holes into the floor where the figurines are going to be placed. And that way the toothpick will go through the floor and we can we can kind of secure it on with some some ca glue inside that hole or under underneath the floor if i can manage that so uh i'll i'll cross that one when i get to it but uh and of course we'll be cutting off some of this but this is very snug uh, I, I found a good size drill bit so that the and the neat thing about the toothpick is that you can kind of uh it can kind of shrink uh, a little bit like it'll form into the hole that i drilled so we get there. There we go. And the other benefit of having it this way is that I can use my alligator clips. And this is a perfect thing to, to grip on with my alligator clips. So when I prime it, I can, I can paint, uh, get all the prime all the way around this. And it's going to be great. And then even for painting the uh, figurine later, uh, we'll uh, maybe put a little bit of video of that after this. So, um, all right, that's the little segment on how I'm prepping these resin uh, figures. Got quite a few more to go. See you soon. Hey everyone, just a few more notes here on the prepping for the resin parts. 
the robot feet here that I have, I did drill a hole on the bottom of each foot. And the only reason I did that is just so that I can put the alligator clips on here and, and prime them pretty well. The other pieces of the robot, pretty much I'm leaving on their little stand. So these are all pieces that you have to remove, these little square things. And I just left them on just so that I can more easily just put a clip on here and and paint them. The There's really no need for me to take these off and drill a hole through there to put a toothpick in it. I'll be uh, priming all of this stuff on its own and then cutting it. So where these, where I'm cutting these off is actually where you glue the pieces together. So it's better that I leave them intact that way and not have to worry about scraping paint off um, this little piece too. So all these little, these little inner pieces here, I'm gonna have to remove from there, but I'm gonna use these as alligator uh, clip uh, bases to to uh, to gra grab onto. Now this part here, I did drill a hole in. This is the main body of the robot. This part I'm going to remove, but because the big the size of this thing that I'm gonna have to remove, I just went ahead and drilled a hole in here so I can just have it there to hold. This is gonna be uh, removed anyway at the end. Last little comment here. Now this is the toothpick that I'm using. I just want to make sure you know that I've been cutting off the end, this pointy part. So I'm just going down to where the pointy part stops and I cut it here. I cut it off camera because I hold it against my chest so the little piece here won't uh, won't fly, fly off and land somewhere. I'm trying to keep the garage a little bit cleaner than, than normal. So um, yeah, the toothpick has been cut and there's the hole that I drilled. And you can kind of hear it, and that's a that's good. I like that sound because it means it's snug, and it's not going to go anywhere. Last little bit of comment. It's a little trick, and probably a lot of people know it, but I was thrilled when I learned it. So if you're wondering on how deep to do a drill, if you're doing multiple pilot holes for something, just grab a little piece of tape and put it on the drill bit where you want to stop, and that's a good eye signal so when you drill, you know when you're done. So when you're all finished drilling you just pull this tape off and there you go okay off to uh, start priming this one and then i'll be putting it together and uh, priming all these two and then we'll start painting them okay everybody i've got quite a bit of stuff done here so i'll start here with the family they are all primed and ready to go did them with tamia white so uh this here is dr smith and i just have to do a little bit of putty work there on his arm where i connected the left arm and i have all of their heads uh taped off because i'm going to now that they're primed i'm going to be spraying them with the silver uh, paint like in the show they had those silver suits on for their freeze process and I don't have the robot here right now. Uh, he is primed, but uh, that's going to be separate. He's a different color, a different kind of a technique. I have to construct him, and there's some photo etch to that. So those are the family. I'm going to be painting them silver right now. And for Dr. Smith, I'm going to give him a, a kind of a darker. This is the uh, interme uh, intermediate blue U.S. Navy. And this is going to be the color for kind of his Space Corps suit. So if I can remember, I will throw up a picture of him right now that I found online. So this, this blue here is pretty close to what he was uh, pictured in there. Um, so these pieces here are the sides to the stairwells like this. I think they go like that. Um, but I'm going to prime them and then mask off these little circles paint them like this nice darker gray as compared to the to the silver there so uh the only other thing here to talk about right now is this leg that i constructed it's a mimic of these here i did not get it perfect so it's a little bit chunky with the glue there so i'm gonna have to sand that down some i'm gonna let this glue sit overnight and then i will sand it down a little and it should be fine and uh, kind of hardly tell with it but it, it is necessary to get this if i want the wires coming down like that i didn't want a plug just sticking out of the ship so um even though i could have been a little bit happier with the way this turned out it is uh accurate as far as the size and the telescoping it works and the wires do go through so i'm just gonna have to drill a little hole there in the bottom of the foot and we'll be okay 
not perfect, but it's going to look fine. And uh, the other thing to talk about here are the doors. There are three doors for these stairwells. And I've gone ahead and drilled a little hole here in the console. And I'm going to be using some fiber optic uh, wire for that. So if you look here, you can, you can stick the fiber optic through. So like right there. And then what I'll do is I'll use a lighter to... Um, kind of mushroom this top and so it won't slide back through um, and then that will be connected to a light in the interior of the ship maybe with a blue or red or some other color so we'll have some nice little color there on these doors and um, the doors do have a little bit of a pattern to them so I'm going to prime them paint them like a gray color and then we'll paint the these little inside bits uh, a different gray there than the door so um, a lot of little details right there and that's it for now everyone so we'll be back uh with a little bit more probably we'll be back with the figurines here i'll get them painted up so but again i'm kind of just doing this as i can and we'll be putting the segments together as we move forward see you soon okay here we are with painting the figurines i've got them all primed and painted in their base colors for their suits and I'm going to go ahead and paint their faces right now and I'm going to I've never done figurines before so I'm sure I'm going to be making some mistakes here but I figured I would paint the base color first and then work up in layers so base color then skin and then hair because the hair is on the top so that seems logical to me so I have here my Tamiya XF15, it's called Flat Flesh, and I've got my helping hands here to hold the model steady, and I've got a little tin cup with some uh, acrylic thinner, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to start here with, I think this is, this is Robinson. So the helping hands are really nice. but I do think I'm going to have to pick the model up and bring this a little closer to my head or my eyes rather and get her hands I tell you I'm not used to using a um, magnifying glass quite quite strange to me so anyway yeah this is the technique I'm basically doing uh, I'm not going to film all of it obviously but we will come back and show you when it's all completed this is going to take me some time uh, the other bit I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to decant some of the silver now this is um, bare metal sil silver. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. It's a, a Tamiya spray, bare metal silver. I had it on hand, and um, it's it's kind of shiny. So it, to me, it, it reflected their suits. Okay. All right. So obviously, I'm a little sloppy there. It's the first one I've done, and. Um, I'm going to dispose of this. Well, not dispose of it. I'm just not going to use it. I'm going to just hold this in my hand and paint it that way. So this uh, toothpick idea I had is really coming in handy. So, um, yeah, I'll uh, finish painting these and touch them up. And next time I be back in this segment, we'll be finished with the figurines. Hey, everyone. I have been in the shop uh, all day doing some painting on the figurines so I just want to take a few minutes and talk about them we'll show them a little, off a little bit so here we go these are the Robinsons so I think the last the last video I did I had them primed but I was able to get them all painted today and they uh, they look pretty good I must say Here they are. So uh, one of the things I, excuse me, I do want to talk about real quick are the instruction manuals for these. And these are wonderful figurines resin made from um, green strawberry. 
The Fantasy Worlds of Erwin Allen. So on here you'll see, if you ever plan to do these, these red bits here show to remove them. So those are the parts you have to remove. But if you look real carefully, you'll see there's parts to remove inside, like in between the arms and the body and in between the two legs. Well, these are very small figurines and I did not, I did not do that. So let me get, uh, so you can see there, there's, there's some uh, resin in between there. Now I have some very, very small drill bits and I don't think I have files though that are that, that tiny. So I opted not to do that. Um, now these are going to be in the freezing tubes, obviously. I would love to have the time and, and the materials needed to remove these parts. It would have really added to some of the realism, but um, it's just a little, just one of those things I just opted not to do. But the paint came out pretty good, I think. Um, the, uh, the paint here, this is some bare metal silver that I spoke about, and I went in with some red enamel, and I tried my best to put these little lines on there. Uh, I suppose I could have printed out some decals, but uh, I wanted to do these hand painted and they're going to be in the tubes and stuff. So, um, so there's that. I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to move the family and Dr. Smith out of the way. And I'm going to talk about B9. So, I have here one of the pieces that I've done the photo etch. These are the photo etch pieces that come with the kit. And you have to glue this guy together. So I am choosing to, I'm gonna glue them all together then paint him. And and that's, uh, I probably could have painted it before, but I, I think I'm just gonna use the brush on this guy. So anyway, then I'm using this rubber applicator that I picked up at hobby town so i get a little bit of glue on there i'm gonna put so right now i'm putting on these two treads you know zoom in some and i'll just do my little method here so i'm going to put glue here on these little bumps And these little rubber things are nice because I can get a little bit on and it almost acts like a brush. And I can control how much I'm putting on a lot more easily than, say, uh, a tip. So. Again, I don't have tons of experience with photo etch. So what I'm going to do here is turn these the right way with these little treads facing outward. Oops. And I'm gonna do it to try not to touch this glue and get it all over my fingers. Okay. And these treads are kind of the thing that you only want to bend them one time. Okay, so I came up a little short on that side along over here. But I'm not going to undo that because this glue is already starting to stick. Kind of made a little mistake there. So I'll just come through and just snip this off. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, I'll snip a little bit more off later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this dry here. And then I'm going to come back later and glue these parts on. So... That way I don't get as messy. Let me do the other one. Okay. Just there. And maybe a little bit there. I might get lucky and have that set. That's why I'm putting it over here. 
even though I'll come through later and kind of secure that a little bit more. Um, also, one of the things I like about these little rubber brushes is I have a bottle of Uncure, which is this stuff, and this, this dissolves uh, super glue. And that way I use that to clean this thing off. So if, if I get buildup, it's, it's okay. Okay. Let's see. It would be nice if I could turn it the right way. Is it turned the right way? It is so hard to tell, oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Pull it tight. Push that down a little bit. And then curve it around there and then try to get my fingers off okay well there we go they're going to dry here and I'm going to set it down push it down a little bit and then move that off to the side. Now I'd already done these bits here. These are, let me zoom out so I'm here for you. Whoa. Sorry, I was shaking the camera. Okay. Uh, these little bits here are already glued together. They just folded right over. So I'm gonna put that over to a safe place and these little areas where I'm doing them. And let's see here. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep going and doing that. I won't, obviously I'm not gonna film this entire thing, but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, those, the bottle issue that I had. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'll look at some more issues. And then um, this way, yeah, again, like it does weigh some, but at least I get better control this way. So I'm gonna finish this kit with that in mind. And we'll see you in the next segment, everybody.